Welcome, today we're doing something a little bit different. Grab some five inch squares and join me. For this project, I'm using a Moda charm pack called Solana by Robin Pickens. I really like the sunflowers in this charm pack. They have ones that look realistic, they have ones that look hazed out like they're in the background, and they have ones that they look like they drew with pen or pencil. I think the flowers that I've designed for this wall hanging would work well with a variety of different charm packs or fabrics. Um, if you don't have a charm pack, you can definitely use 42 5 inch squares and you'll need some scrap fabric to make the flowers. To start this project, you'll need to sew your squares together. You're going to sew them 6 across and 7 down using 42 5 inch squares. Before sewing them together, you may want to lay them out to see what's included in your charm pack. Sometimes you get one block of one print and sometimes you get five blocks of the same print. You also want to take note to see if you have any directional fabric. Uh, in this pack, I have several squares that are non-directional and a few that are directional. With this being a wall hanging, you want to make sure they're all hanging the right way. Um, I have a directional fabric in the upper left hand corner of the little building and I wouldn't want that to be upside down when I hang my wall hanging. After you sew your squares together, you're going to want to make a quilt sandwich using a piece of batting and a piece of backing material for your wall hanging. Once you have your fabric sandwiched together, you'll want to do some type of top stitching. This wall hanging, I just used a walking foot and made wavy lines horizontally across the panel. To make the puffy part of the flower, you will need to trace a circle or draw a circle that is approximately six and a half inches in diameter. Here I just used a plastic lid to a food container. You'll need to cut out two pieces of fabric that are approximately six and a half inches in diameter. And they can actually be different colors if you didn't have two pieces of the same color. You're only going to see a little bit of the back of the flower. Once you have cut your two circles out, you're going to sew them together, leaving a small opening for turning it right side out. Once you have sewn your two pieces of fabric together, you're going to want to turn them right side out. And normally when you have a curve in your fabric, you want to clip it so that the fabric lays flat. But for these flowers, it's not necessary to do that. We actually don't want them to lay flat. We want them to be puffy and kind of crinkly. Once your fabric is turned right side out, you're going to want to fill it with some kind of stuffing. And you want to stuff it um, so that it feels like a little pillow. Um, you don't want it too thick because we are going to have to get this under the sewing machine. But you definitely want it to have a little bit of fluff so that you have some texture on your wall hanging. Once you get your fabric soft, you're going to make a center to this flower. And this can be any size that you want. Uh, since I was trying to get mine to look somewhat like a sunflower, I wanted a very large center. Um, so I just folded up some fabric and cut out a circle. You can definitely trace something if you want this to be perfect, or you can just kind of uh, make your own kind of circle. To close up the opening in your fabric, you'll want to hand stitch that closed so that you don't see the stitches. Um, for now, I'm going to temporarily glue it with fabric glue and I'm going to put a pin in it um, to hold that glue to hold it together while the glue dries. Later, I'll go back when I'm doing other hand stitching um, and stitch this closed. For the center of the flower, 
I'm going to temporarily use fabric glue to glue this in place. Um, I don't want to use pins to hold this down because when I go to put sew on the yarn, do the couching, um, the pins I think will get in the way. So I'm just going to use some type of fabric glue uh, just to temporarily hold this in place. If you're not familiar with the term couching, it's just sewing some type of string or rope to a piece of fabric. Um, and a lot of times they recommend a special presser foot for this, but you can get away with using an open-toed presser foot. Uh, if you're not going to do this often, I wouldn't invest in uh, an expensive foot to do this. When you sew yarn or rope to fabric, you can use a variety of stitches. Um, here on the right, I've used a really wide zigzag stitch. Uh, I made the stitching in blue so you could see it. And when you use this wide stitch, it kind of flattens the yarn down, but it holds it on really well. And then in the middle, I have used a straight stitch, just running it down the middle of the yarn. And I used blue uh, thread and you really can't see it. And then on the left, I used a very tiny zigzag stitch and it is in a blue thread so you can see that a little bit on this one. Uh, you can use really whatever you want. You just need to experiment with it because you will get a different look depending on the stitch that you use. Um, if you're looking at the stitch on the right and noticing those, these little lumps, uh, for some reason my sewing machine was skipping stitches the day I filmed this. Um, I'm going to have to take it apart and clean it. Um, and if that doesn't resolve the issue, I'm going to have to take it to a repair shop. Uh, your stitches should be continuous and you shouldn't get those little lumps if it's working correctly. Here I'm getting ready to sew the yarn around the center of my uh, flower. I'm going to position it so that uh, the yarn is right on the raw edge and it covers the raw edge up. I've picked a thread that's the uh, same color as my yarn so you don't see it. Uh, it'll be hidden and I'm using just a uh, open toed presser foot and I'm going to keep the yarn right in the center of the presser foot and um, I've picked a zigzag stitch that's going to go from one side of the yarn to the other. When sewing the yarn on you definitely are going to have to take your time. Um, you have a lot going on here. You want to keep uh, the raw edge of your center circle and your yarn in the center of your presser foot and you're going to have to stop and pivot um, so that you can go around the circle. you got a lot of bulk right here to sew. If you have a couching foot in your stash, it's worth trying to see if it makes this a little bit easier. Um, but as you can see, it's not absolutely necessary that you have one. You can get by with an open-toed presser foot. When you get back to where you started from, you're going to want to clip the starting piece of yarn, the bitter end, off very close to the stitching. And then you're going to stitch the yarn right over top of this, covering it up. And um, you won't have a lump there, it'll flatten out. You just want to make sure that it lines up. You will want to overlap your yarn by about a quarter of an inch and then either back stitch or tack it into place. Once you have completed your circle, you will just trim the yarn very close to your stitching. Well, now that you have one done, you have two more to go. So we're going to make three flowers for this project. Once we have finished our centers, we're going to work on the next layer, um, which I would call either leaves or petals. And we are going to do two layers um, with the same technique, but we're going to make them slightly different in size. We are going to cut two circles for this that are approximately seven and a half inches in diameter. And we're going to cut a circle of interfacing, a lightweight interfacing, that is slightly smaller than the diameter of these circles. And we're going to fuse that interfacing to the wrong side of one of our circles. Using the circle without interfacing, we are going to fold that in half. Then we are going to fold it in half again. Once we've done that, we're going to fold it in half one more time. Mm -hmm. 
If you hold your little wedge of fabric up, you will see three folds on one side. And if you look at the other side, there should only be one fold. Holding this fabric in one hand, we are going to cut a curve in towards the very center, about an inch down, maybe an inch and a half down, and then we're going to cut the same kind of curve out towards the other side. When you unfold this circle, you should get something similar to what I have here in the video. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is a fun kind of wonky project. Um, so, you know, it's whatever you want it to be. With your circle with the fused interfacing on it, you're going to layer this piece that you just cut out on top and you're going to put them wrong sides together. You may want to use a pin or two to hold the fabrics together. We're going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to use some type of fancy stitch to sew these together. And like I said, we're putting wrong sides together for this fabric and uh, for mine I used a zigzag stitch. Once you have the fabric sewn together, we are going to cut off the excess fabric, leaving about an eighth an inch of fabric beyond the stitch line. So we are going to make three of these, one for each center flower center that we have made, and we started originally with a seven and a half inch diameter circle. To do the next layer, we are going to do the same thing as before, but we're going to start with a slightly bigger circle. This time we're going to use a circle that is approximately eight inches in diameter. The steps are same as before. We're going to use our two pieces of fabric and we're going to fuse one piece of interfacing to one of those pieces of fabric. Then we're going to take our other circle and we're going to fold it in half three times. And when you look at it sideways, one side will have three folds and the other side will have one fold. If it's easier for you, you can actually finger press a little seam in the center of these so that you have a center mark for doing your cutting. So you still want to hold it up so that it is three folds on one side, one fold on the other, but now you have a center marking uh, in the center where you finger pressed. And then you're going to cut inward towards that center line and then cut outward doing a slight curve. You'll now take this to the sewing machine and you'll sew around the edges as you did before. After we've sewed these together, we'll cut them out. So you'll want to continue on making one of these for each flower center that you have, starting with an 8 inch diameter circle. Once you have all these completed, you'll be able to stack your flowers together uh, and hand stitch them together to get them ready to be put on your quilt.
So now that your flowers are finished, um, you'll want to hand stitch them together and you'll want to hand stitch any openings that you may have left in your uh, circles or temporarily um, held together with glue. You'll want to stitch them now because it'll make them easier to get on the quilt. Now that our flowers are completed, we're going to move on to making some stems. To do this, I started by cutting some one and a half inch strips of fabric. To get the length for these strips, you'll need to lay your flowers out on your quilt and see where you want them positioned to determine how long you'll need to cut your strips. For me, I had to piece some together because I did not have long enough fabric scraps. You will need to iron under your raw edges on these strips a quarter inch on each side. I made a couple leaves for my sunflowers and I just did some wonky shapes and so two pieces of fabric together, turned them right side out, and then I top stitched around the edges to make my leaves. I didn't do really anything fancy. I just picked a random shape uh, and cut it out for my leaves. With your stem material in place, you are going to want to have that raw edge turn, turned under and you're gonna stitch down the side close to the edge. You're just gonna do one side and if you have a leaf that you want to include in this, you wanna make sure that you have it in place before you do your stitching. Once I stitch down the one side of my stem, I cut a piece of clothesline to the length of my stem and I put it under the fabric and then I tack the top of it and then I stitch down the other side of the stem. If you are including leaves in any of your stems, you'll want to make sure that you pin them down so you don't forget about them. So in this view, I'm sewing down the one side of my stem. I'm tucking my clothesline or my piece of rope under that um, and I'm pushing it to the far right. I'm just using an open-toed foot here and it's working well. I seem to have plenty of space. My clothesline is about a quarter inch in diameter um, and it's working out fine. It's not getting in the way. You could definitely use a zipper foot um, if you thought you needed more room or it works better for you. But you just want to do straight stitching down the side of your stem and continually push that clothesline over to the right. You will want to tack the top of your clothesline down in place so it doesn't somehow slide down inside the stem or get pulled through. Okay, once you have finished your stems, it's time to get this bad boy trimmed up and ready for finishing. Since I know I'm making this into a wall hanging, I wanted to make some kind of rod pocket for the top of the quilt. Um, to do this, I took a three inch piece of fabric and I cut it the width of my quilt. I ironed this strip with wrong sides together and then on the ends, I turned them under a quarter of an inch and then a quarter of an inch again and I sewed a straight stitch down that to finish the edge. If you cut your rod pocket the width of your panel and then you take it in on each end a half of an inch, it'll be short enough to stay out of the way when you put your binding on. If you're using the rod pocket, you'll want to pin it on to the top of your panel, raw edges to raw edges and centered. This will give you about a half an inch of free space on each side of the panel. Thank you. 
So here you can see that I've sewn the rod pocket into the top of the quilt into the binding, but I haven't sewn it into the sides. That way I can easily get to the opening and insert something to hang the quilt by. I normally use a quarter inch to three eighth inch dowels to hang small quilts, uh, but for a large quilt, uh, the dowel would bow. You'd have to go thicker on that or use something else. Um, and with this rod pocket, you can hand stitch it to the back of this quilt, only going through the back layer of fabric, and then you wouldn't see it from the front. Or you can flip it actually up, and um, you would see it from the front, but it is attractive, so uh, it's whatever you prefer. If you do decide to flip your rod pocket up so that you see it from the front, you may want to run a state straight stitch down the seam binding to sew the two together. Uh, it would probably lay better um, if you do that. That's just a suggestion. For the seam binding for this quilt, I just used two and a half inch strips of fabric. I ironed them in half and I sewed them to the back of the panel first and then folded them forward to the front. Well, the last thing to do now is to sew our flowers to our wall hanging. I saved this for last so that they wouldn't get in the way while we were doing other construction of the quilt. I just hand stitched these in place and made sure that I did a little extra stitching on the top of the flowers so that they wouldn't flop out over when the wall hanging was hung. If you've stuck with me this far, please give yourself a pat on the back and please comment and like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Thank you.